All right, let's add some content to this bad boy. Um, what I want to do is actually put basically what's going to end up being a div container smack in the center of uh, this picture or this background. Really, uh, doesn't doesn't have to be center of everything, but it does have to be center vertic uh, horizontally. And then I'll probably add some spacing up top. So, well, what am I going to do? Well, I know that to center things in the middle of the browser, um, I'm going to need auto margins for my left and right side. Um, and also, that container that I'm going to, that box of stuff I'm going to put in is going to be a div container. So, why don't I go ahead and do just that? I'm going to go into the body underneath my picture, and I'm going to add a div ID equals, why don't we go main? content. Um, oops, you know what I forgot? Our quotes, of course. And then let me close that div container out. And now I'm going to add the stuff. So I'll do an H1 and I go, this is a header. And now I'm going to add some paragraph text. Um, this is the main content. And then I'll just take this a couple times over, and then I'll close the P with a paragraph, and I'm just going to do it one more time. So there we go. Um, and what did I say? I know that in order to for this stuff to be centered, I'm going to have to do the auto margin stuff on the left and right side, but I also have to define a width. So before I even preview this, I'm going to go to main con. I'm going to copy main content here, and I'm going to put this in my styles main content. And first, I'll do a width. Uh, let's use the 40 m's uh, readability thing, and then the margin. So margin. I'm going to use the shorthand. I know that if I had four things, it'd be top, right, left, uh, bottom, and left. But since I'm going to have the similar values for right and left, the actual other shorthand is works like top, bottom, since they have similar uh, similar attributes, and right, left. So with that said, for my top and bottom, I'll leave it to zero right now, my right and left, those are going to be auto values. So now let me refresh this. What happened? Well, if you look down below, I, I got the content how I wanted it, centered and all that, but it's below the image because, um, well, that's just the standard document flow. So what can I do at this point? Well, this is where absolute positioning comes in. Now, absolute positioning basically takes things out of the regular flow of the document, and by adding like top and left attributes to, to it, you could position it exactly where you want. Now, there's some great articles online, and at CSSTricks.com, it gives you a nice uh, graphical way of thinking about it. Um, let's first just talk about absolute positioning and how it works inside of relatively positioned elements. So by default, the body HTML element, so that's the element that everything you see is, this thing is considered relatively, relatively positioned. Now, in order to absolutely position something, it has to be relative to the relative positioning, if that makes sense. So, in this positioning that we're doing now, it's very basic. We're just going to position it within the browser window. Basically, we just want to take it, like I said, out of the document, out of the regular document flow. We want to take this stuff and not have it, all, despite the fact that it's underneath that body, that image, we want to take it out of the flow and kind of put it, I guess, smack right on top of it, right? And that's what we could do with absolute positioning. So let's do just that. Since the body, by default, has a position 
relative attribute, we don't have to add that to it. Okay? It already has that. But we need to do is to the main content, we need to add position and not relative, abso absolute. Okay. Now, let me give it a refresh. Um, what happened there? Not quite what we wanted. Hmm. How can we remedy this? <laughs> maybe actually maybe what we need to do is not add the absolute positioning you know what I said wrong because if we do this absolute positioning it messes up the margins over here so let's try adding absolute positioning to the background image because maybe that will uh, kind of do what we want it to do. It's going to take this out of the regular document flow and what's underneath it, which happens to be the main content, should theoretically pop right on top over here in the corner. Save it, refresh it, and now we have nothing. What happened there? Well, if we look at the source code, let's go to Firefox because it has better coding. If we look at the source code, we see that in fact it's here, but it's not actually visible on the page. Well, what's going on now is that this, these two things are now stacked on top of each other. This actually does live underneath this image. So now, how can we get this thing to come in front of that image? Well. There's something called a Z index stacking order. That's when you're using stuff like absolute positioning, and all of a sudden you have two elements that are uh, stacked on top of each other. You do have the ability to define which one is going to be up, like, top more, and which one is going to be in the back more. Kind of like similar conceptually to um, Photoshop layers. So, and oh. Just to say that the higher the number the Z index is, the more on top of previous things it's going to be. Now we only have two elements, so what we could do is for the image that we have, let's set a Z index of negative 100. Now we're going to push that thing way behind. And now to force this other thing to be up front, actually the other thing being main index, will add a Z index of 100. Let me just tell you that if we added Z index 0 and then Z index 1, main content is still going to be up top, up, up front. But the reason I added such a large range over here is I don't know if there's going to be other elements that I'm going to need to wedge in the middle. And now I'm just kind of planning for stuff in the future because if I do have to kind of re-Z index things, if you will, um, I won't have to change every single number because if you have the numbers consecutively, uh, all of a sudden trying to stack something in the middle, you're going to have to, you can't just give it a number somewhere in the middle of those values. You're going to have to give it, uh, you're going to have to change all of the Z index values. So, enough talk, let's see if it works. And in fact, it does. So, there you go. We learned two pretty heady concepts over here. The first is this thing called absolute positioning, where it basically takes two things that are in a document flow and one gets ignored. So we basically set the absolute positioning for this background image and now the main content div container ignored it and it just kind of sat in the same place where it was. And because it sat in the same place where it was, one was stacked on top of the other. So we had to bring one to the front and we did that with Z index.